With the release of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean happening today, I thought it would be a fun time to look back on the previous animated JoJo seasons and give my rankings for which arcs I think are the best in the series. I will only be talking about the animated seasons though since I haven't read the manga and this is all I really have to go off of, so please calm down Steel Ball Run fans. So without further ado, here are my rankings for the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure animated arcs. Also, spoilers ahead. At number 5 I have Phantom Blood. Phantom Blood has quite a bit of problems. I remember watching this first arc and being utterly bewildered and borderline disinterested. The voice acting in the dub is very odd, the accents are pretty bad, and the animation style isn't as vibrant and detailed as it gets in later arcs. Plus, Jonathan Joestar is a pretty boring protagonist. What this arc does well is establish Dio Brando as the villain. He is pure evil, and his characterization is incredibly important when it comes to later arcs in the JoJo's. The stone mask mystery and vampire story is entertaining enough, but this is certainly the worst animated JoJo adaptation. Number 4, I have Golden Wind. The most recent installment of the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure franchise falls pretty low on my list simply because the person who's supposed to be the main protagonist, Giorno Giovanna, is just so boring. Giorno is as bland as they come and his stand serves as a deus ex machina throughout the series. Halfway through the season, Giorno's stand becomes a healer out of nowhere, able to patch up bullet wounds and restore injured comrades to perfect health. Seems like a bit of a ripoff of another JoJo protagonist, which we'll get to later. The surrounding cast isn't too great either, except for Bruno Bucciarati, who is definitely the standout of this arc. Fugo, Abakio, Mista, and Narancia are just not as interesting as previous casts, and their characterizations are not developed enough in the animated series. Even the villain doesn't have as much of a backstory as previous arcs, which really hurts the story. We don't really know much about his motivations other than he wants to TAKE OVER THE WORLD, which is just the most overused villain trope in any medium. And then there's Trish, one of the most useless and annoying characters in JoJo. She is bratty and doesn't contribute much at all throughout the arc, and her stand has a pretty silly power. Luckily, this arc is saved by Bruno Bucciarati, the badass leader of the gang of mafioso, with an impressive stand power and an interesting backstory. He feels more like the main character of this arc, which is a huge detriment to Giorno, who mostly takes a backseat in his own story. The animation is top quality, if not a little too colorful for me, I mean, it was pretty wild at certain points, but the soundtrack is an absolute banger. For number three, I have Battle Tendency. This is Joseph Joestar's first of many appearances in the series, and it's his own JoJo arc. He's the main protagonist here. This is the arc that made me really start to get into JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. After slogging my way through Phantom Blood, I was delighted by the fun characters and interesting story in Battle Tendency. Joseph Joestar is a funny charismatic, and sometimes dastardly hero who will try to defeat his opponents by any means necessary. Joseph feels more human than both Jonathan and Giorno, which is what makes this season stand out. The Pillar Men are impressive villains, and the supporting cast of Caesar and Lisa Lisa make for some fun interactions and banter. The animation isn't the greatest we've seen in JoJo, but the story is good enough to overlook those deficiencies. At number 2, I have Stardust Crusaders. This is perhaps the most popular and well-recognized story in the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure franchise, and with good reason. It saw the introduction of stands in the series, and it was highly effective. The main JoJo in this arc is Jotaro Kujo, a brash, rude, mean man who doesn't take crap from anyone. Joseph Joestar is in this one too, as a bit of a mentor to his younger colleagues in their fight against Dio, who has been resurrected from his watery grave. The Stardust Crusaders have to fight and defeat a litany of stand users, each with incredibly interesting powers. The strategies they employ to defeat their enemies are almost always interesting, and there are tons of hilarious moments in this art. The art is colorful, the character designs are great, and the story while a little long, is fantastic. And at number one, I have Diamond is Unbreakable. When I first watched Diamond is Unbreakable, I had such an uneasy feeling about it. There's something a little off about the town of Morio, and that's exactly what this arc is all about. The color palette is very odd, with the most prominent colors being purple, green, yellow, and navy blue. It's a serial killer mystery arc that follows Josuke Higashikata and an ensemble of colorful, well-developed comrades. Familiar faces like Jotaro and Joseph are in this arc once again, and everyone feels very real and human. Josuke is a goofy high 
high school kid who seems like someone you might actually know in real life and be friends with. Jotaro has calmed down a bit from his days as a jerk to just about everyone he crossed paths with. Koichi, Okuyasu, and the rest of the town's stand users all have their own motives and desires, and it's interesting to see how they use their stands in order to accomplish those goals. Where this story really takes the cake, though, is the villain, Yoshikage Kira. Kira is, in my opinion, the most well-developed villain in any JoJo arc. There are some episodes of the series where we just spend the entire episode with Kira and see what he's all about, how he's planning on accomplishing his evil plans, and the lengths that he is willing to go to in order to live a quiet and peaceful life of... murder. I also want to give a shout out to Rohan Kishibe, one of the best JoJo characters ever created. Couldn't go without mentioning that fashionable manga artist. So there you have it, my rankings for the best JoJo animated arcs. Thanks for watching, and hopefully Stone Ocean will end up high on this list whenever we make another version of this video. Thanks, see ya! Thanks for watching that clip from the Anime Movie Podcast. Follow the links in the description below to hear full episodes, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more fun clips like this.